back guys and girls to another episode of Dad's Toy Garage and we got a new episode for the toy shop portion and uh, I've got Bob here, you've met him on some of my other series and we're going to introduce his hobby. The toy <laughs> shop is for doing hobby stuff that's not real one-to-one -one car stuff, it's for doing models, fun stuff. We're going to tell you, actually he's going to tell you about his hobby and what we got going <laughs> here. He is. I'll also introduce something he's going to be doing for me uh, at some point. So let's get into this. Let's have fun. It's going to be a really cool episode. I think you guys are going to love it. cars you had made. Do you want to show us those up close here? Uh, yeah, sure. So the first car that I have actually uh, was uh, this beautiful General Lee uh, 69 Dodge Charger. Uh, I actually uh, got this body off of, uh, off of you. Uh, you were kind enough to, uh, to donate the body. I've been looking for one for a while already and uh, you gave it to me so thank you very much. You no uh, problem. It's getting <laughs> it's getting more miles than I ever did sitting in my shelf. <laughs> uh, well, it it likes to go at least thirty five mile an hour. So and uh, <laughs> and this car was painted. I can talk about this part. Um, I built a ton of models as a kid, and uh, I had shelves of them. And my dad would always paint them at Tripoli, uh, where I work with automotive paint. So that's base clear BASF on there, and uh, the chassis. You want to show the guys and girls your chassis? That's the chassis, you had that one built, right? Uh, this one is actually where I learned how to build chassis. I got to actually help build this car. Uh, this is the first car that I got to, to be mine and uh, to race. Uh, through the, uh, the program that, I am th that we went through at the, uh, the youth ministry in, in town to build this one for myself. But that wasn't the exciting one. The exciting one was actually this one here. This is the car. It's a 2016 um, Chevy Camaro that uh, my daughter actually wanted. Uh, so we bought the car and one of the guys built the chassis, which is, as you can see, looks exactly the same as my uh, Charger, just a little bit different with the wheelbase and motor setup. Uh, we can talk for hours about how to build these cars. There's always something different that you can do so many things. This one I got built for my for my daughter and she just loves it. She races this car quite regularly and is very consistent with her times. We just need to work, the time is consistent, we just need to work on her reaction time because we do use a full tree when we do the racing so it is like drag racing. This car I actually got painted by Devin here. He is, he has been kind enough to become my painter so this is her her car. Oh, and what's that car running? Uh, what is her average time? Her average time, uh, we just did racing this last week, and her fastest time, I believe, was an, a 9.01. .901. So and that's guys, of a second. So You guys have to think, this is a scale eighth mile track. So in real life, you're running your drag car down the track at point nine seconds kind of like right yeah yeah and what was the top speed then what did they uh, i think if i remember correctly this one was running at about 25 mile an hour is before i get too far on with with stuff i'm gonna put this one back i want to show you guys how these bodies go on i'm gonna do it on the general lee because i know that it's a little bit easier than on on the camaro we actually have little pins here so we just pull these out. These are actually just your regular uh, sewing needles. Those grandmas, moms that do sewing use, just put a kink in it and it holds it. And then- and the front is mounted how? On this one is just uh, friction fit, but you can do pins as well. Just trust the bottom. It's just real simple on there, hey? Just real simple. We've got a, a fake bottom in here just to help with, uh, as you can see, there's actual tire debris. So these things are more like a real dragster than uh, some people would think. So this is how the car is, is built. It's got your gears in the back. So you got your crown gear and your pinion. 
And and can you change those out, or is, are you stuck with a certain set? Um, you're not stuck with a certain set. There's different uh, crown gear, amount of teeth, same with pinion gears. You want to get one that has a good setup for the car, uh, for power to rate ratio. But the way the, the racing that we do is primarily bracket racing, so we're we're giving them a dial in time of how fast we believe the car is going. Uh, this car, a .760 in a dial in. So it would be like as if you're trying to run a, uh, in regular drag racing, if you're gonna be doing a quarter mile and you're in the, uh, the eight second class. I see, yeah. So you, if you go faster than eight seconds, you're out, right? So if I run faster than a .760, then I lose. So right. that's what we do a lot of. It, there's not a lot of heads up stuff. Why? Uh, I was asking you, why does the motor mount in the back of the car instead of putting it in the front for extra weight? Is there a reason? There's actually a couple different types of cars uh, that you can do. You can actually get ones that have a, a drive shaft, two, op two opinion gear. But it's all depending on your um, your motor setup. I have not gotten any of that. I've like I like this one here, and then I just put a little bit of a counterweight. Usually about one ounce is usually all that you need on the front depending on the size of your um, your wheelie bar set up in the back. There are cars that get built without wheelie bars. Um, I don't have any. Usually if you build ones that have wheelie bar, non wheelie bar cars, they have more weight on it because you have to keep the front down because the torque from the motor will actually lift it up. That's and then awesome. And then you'll get out of the groove and you'll lose connection and you will not go any further. So uh it it's important to to know what you're doing and to, to set it up properly to set the chassis up and and the other thing you were showing me like if we look at your other car here the front wheels they don't touch they're off a bit and you had a reason for that right yeah so you don't want to have have your wheels touch the track you'd rather have your brushes touch the track more than have your wheels your wheels some spin uh if this one doesn't really like to spin they don't need to touch the track for you to go down. You want all the weight on these brushes so you have a good connection so that when you're actually going down the track that you're actually getting all the electricity that you can to the motor and down the track you go. Less drag, right? That's the biggest thing that you want in, in drag racing in real life is less drag and you want the same uh, for these because the faster that we go, the more drag these cars actually have to endure. <laughs> car um is that a bracket car or is that a is there another class that cars run in oh uh, this is a this is a bracket car i got to build enough my first car i built i built a 68 69 uh, camaro which is this one here i actually managed to to get this body for 20 dollars off of a guy it had it had the interior it had everything including this wing on it didn't have a chassis it was a nice body but it had a horrible paint job so I sanded it down, painted it flat black, did some kind of aluminum finish to the rear wing and did some uh, gloss black rally stripes on there. I wanted to make this thing really sinister. I even painted on the grill to really accentuate the chrome and make it a little more sinister. Lexan racing windows, yeah. <laughs> Lexan wi <laughs> racing windows, uh, care of uh, dad's toy garage. Uh, <laughs> Devin gave me a hand with doing that. This car I actually nick nicknamed Black Widow. So on the bottom, I, since I painted the chassis, I put in a Black Widow emblem on the bottom. And Black Widow is a Marvel character, yeah? I wasn't naming it after the, Mar the Marvel character. I was naming it after the spider because they were deadly. Oh, very <laughs> cool. That is cool. Yep. So, um, and this car is not very quick, right? This car, um, we have another, another class. So where I'm at, we do slot car outlaw racing. So uh, we have a class where we do heads up street outlaw racing. It has to be a car, uh, real a real car, not a dragster or a rail. It has to have an interior, windows, anything else goes as fast as you can make this make the car go. So this car was the first one I made. The first night I went out, I did I made a pass going .669. So that was the fastest that we could that we had run. 
uh, that night in the whole out of everybody that was there at the group and uh, we started our slot outlaw class and I ranked number one and what do you remember what mile an hour that would get you with that car that was at 42 42 just over 42 mile an hour so uh, the track is 27 and a half feet long so it uh, it only took 0.669 to travel from the start to passing the finish line and it was at 42 mile an hour but that's not the fastest this car has gone uh, this last week I actually got to um, the track setup happened to work out right the stars all aligned whatever you want to say uh, I actually managed to make this thing go down the track at 0.662 which is just over or almost 43.5 mile an hour um, that's pretty quick I believe the fastest car at our track did a 0.59 or something like that and that was actually like a rail like like one of these types of cars um, but to have an actual full-bodied car to do get close there is is, is pretty good I was, I was impressed especially when you told me 43 miles an hour <laughs> I'm thinking in town you go 30 miles per hour or when we're in Canada that's 50 kilometers an hour so you're breaking speed limit with that little guy there yeah I'm I'm okay with that um, <laughs> it's cool it, it's really awesome so this was the first car I built and uh, it definitely is not gonna be the last one I build I'm not gonna get rid of this one for for uh, any reason right now because it's a lot of fun to have it's kind of neat to get a one of the fastest cars in the uh, open class, eh? <laughs> <laughs> it it is uh, it's very fun. Um, I know that I was number one right now. I'm actually number two, and uh, it happens to be that uh, we run a pro tree when we're doing our slot outlaw class, and uh, we have youth uh, kids that are teenagers. They come out and they have their own cars that are respectable. They have they run like a point six seven point six eight. Uh, car so they're very comparable to what I have but they're just that much faster on reaction time and that's how they beat me every time is that they just have are way faster on reaction young person advantage right young person advantage uh, and uh, to be honest I'm okay if they beat me I'm not okay if it, it's one of the other adults it's, it's, it's <laughs> about the kids on all honesty anyways yeah all honesty it's about the kids it's a ministry to reach the kids to to get them uh, to do something that's more fun uh, than uh, Picking around on the street, just a lot of fun. So, so um, is there a place people can go to see where you guys are at, or what would you say? Um, well, if you want to check out, check us out. Uh, there is a Facebook page called uh, Manitoba Slot Car Drag Racing Association. If you look on there, it'll tell you where we where we meet, when we meet, um, with the times to be there. Uh, and even what type of racing is going to be going on because sometimes we'll actually just do a, a, a test and tune night so that way uh, people can come in change gear ratios on cars test things out um, there's guys that actually make that I'm not the only one that builds cars there's a lot of the guys that do and there's one guy that's actually making a four-wheel drive car pretty so cool. it's pretty cool but he's been struggling with it for a while and uh, he's finally starting to to know what he needs to do but now he's still trying to figure out exactly how to make it to work 100%. And, and Bob actually has got an Instagram page set up if you guys want to watch. He'll be building more cars in the future. You can uh, get updates that way and mm -hmm. I'll, I'll connect you guys with that logo uh, in a second here. So. Yeah, uh, my uh, uh, Black Widow, Project Black Widow is on my Instagram at, uh, at Bobo's Hot Rod Fab Shop. Uh, it's underscores in between each each word, but it has everything from when I'm making the chassis. Uh, it has my fir what the first night I'm racing a little video there of it going down the track. Uh, the uh, time slip that I had been telling you about the first one, the fastest uh, time that Let's I had take, done then. Take a look at that slip. So this is the one that I had just done. So go. right here we've got our ET of six six two. And even your reaction time. What's a perfect reaction time? I don't know it's different depending on which track you're racing. A at. perfect reaction time is triple zero. Perfect. So 
um, I managed to get a, a 075, which is actually pretty good. Uh, most of the time you can win on that. Uh, I lost hmm. because the guy that I was racing had a double zero. And you both are, it means you're so pretty well in tune with those cars. We, we, and we both uh, are very well tuned on the cars. His, his car actually uh, went only 0 .004 slower than what I ran on this one. So um, we know our cars. We try to try to run them a lot as much as possible. This car, I've probably got a hundred passes already down. And so that's, that's more than what two months old, Bill. Um, three, maybe four months already. There's one other car that I have done right now, just to switch gears a bit. This rail. So this is another. This is a car that actually I bought this way. Uh, one of the other racers were getting out and uh, I wanted to get another car so that um, my daughter didn't have to borrow a car because we like to race two cars so we can stay uh, more competitive, have a chance to go into second rounds when we do bracket racing. So I picked this one up and uh, it's, a, it's a nice rail. It's pretty consistent. It uh, runs at about a, a .800. Yeah, this is just uh, one that I bought for for her to, to use and for any of my anybody else that needs to let's say comes and I have extra cars and they can they can use hint hint Devin <laughs> <laughs> the other thing that that I like about about the slot car stuff is every car guy likes to ha doesn't just like one car that is true um <laughs> hold, hold on a second one two wait where's the other one well, there's a couple of sides, yeah. Yeah, you're right, you're right. <laughs> so, Devin's a little bit of a different one. He's got two of the exact same car, basically, at That's least body style. And, and if you guys have met Tony, he tells me I should maybe be building more than just one style of car. So <laughs> maybe Bob Bob would be jealous of this, but someday I'm going to own a 68 Charger. Yeah, I'd I mean, see that build here on this. Channel. If 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 he gets to do that, then I have a feeling I'm going to be here a lot. A um, lot, a lot, a lot. <laughs> a lot. And, and if you guys haven't guessed, um, Bob is potentially the biggest Dodge Charger General Lee fan you'll meet. So, I'm like Devin. I'm not just going to build one Charger. I have a, a Charger oh, here. Oh, wait, wait. You have two of the same project cars too. Yes. Oh. What do so, we got? So I've got another 69 Charger right here. This is just a body that is uh, ready for paint, which Devin is going to be so kind enough to, to paint yet. We're looking at actually painting the car a charcoal gray or charcoal black um, color that Devin has already. It'll be your but second angry car. Right? It'll be my second angry car. But this is the chassis. So when we build our cars we actually get uh, a chassis kit so that is actually all these stainless steel uh, little plates on here that come in uh, come together that you have to break apart with a dremel cut them apart clean them up a bit but then we have you have to solder it all together so having to to clean everything up I've I've been using a file just to make sure that the, everything sit fits nicely and uh, all these bars are actually just a rod that I bought at a local ho hobby st shop here uh, that uh, you use for RC planes uh, they're the right thickness there's it's still lightweight and uh, you just solder them on here uh, this length here will depend on whatever your taste is some people would actually only have it here we'll show you later on one then we'll compare it to this one once that's done then I'm gonna put this thing together, get this body mounted on here before we paint it. Once the body's mounted, we'll take it off, I'll bring it to Devin, let him do his painting, and I'm gonna take the chassis over to our racetrack and test it. That way we can make sure that this thing is running straight and true. Without a body? Without the body. Oh. Because that way, if it decides to pop off the track, we're not wrecking a body. One of the other things when you're building your cars is you actually get to choose different wheels. So for this, uh, uh, charger project that I'm doing I'm gonna be doing a gold evolution style wheel uh, I only have the fronts here right now the rears are actually on order <laughs> so it's gonna be a little bit more sinister than than uh, 
than even my Black Widow. It's going to have uh, show a little bit more tire, be a little bit more meaty, and uh, it'll look real awesome. But I might be a little bit more crazy than Devin at times because in all actuality with cars he's got his two two uh, Celicas that he's got I've got my two chargers here but I've got another car that is the same based off the same chassis if if you call it from Dodge and that is a 69 Plymouth GTX and, and what I should say <laughs> is you can do a little back and forth what I should say is you guys know me as a Toyota guy but in all honesty I've been a Dodge guy a lot longer than that. I have another project I will be introducing, speaking of having too many cars to you guys. It's maybe has a Dodge symbol or on it or two. We'll be getting into that in another video, but I am a Dodge guy as well when it comes to muscle cars. <laughs> so you may have caught on to that by now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so I've got this one. We're gonna actually, uh, me and Devin, we're gonna have a little bit more fun with this one. It's going to be more of an intricate paint job and I'm actually going to give you guys a little bit of a sneak peek that even people on my Instagram that know that I'm building this car does not know. This is a sample of the color that this car is going to be. So what I'm planning on doing with Devin, if things work out, we want to have below this molding line is going to be black, above the molding line all the way up is going to be this BMW electric blue and it's gonna look real nice and it's gonna especially, really pop especially in the sunshine we'll have yeah. it popping. and then on the hood as factory GTX would have they would have a satin finish here so after we've done the clear coat we'll do a little scuff up on here and uh, do a satin finish on the black so it really looks like a GTX from back in the 70s my first ride in a muscle car ever i grew up building cars as i've told you in other videos with my dad first muscle car ride ever was a gtx but it was a green one with a 440 it was an R rt they came rt right yeah yeah i think it was a 440 rt gtx that's the first your first muscle car ride you don't forget so now you guys have seen bob's hobby it's totally cool I've built a ton of these model cars growing up. Always thought it'd be fun to put an electric motor and turn them into an RC car. Obviously I never did any of that, but <laughs> this is a new outlet for playing with plastic model cars and to add to my Hot Wheels type stuff. Um, so we got Bob, he's getting into building chassis and I thought I have a Celica model kit. So technically, at this point now, I have three Celicas, not just two, right? Yeah. So uh, maybe do you want to show them what, so, what we got going, what you're doing for me? So Devin uh, asked if I could uh, build him a car. I want to also help him and say, kind of give him a little bit of thanks for doing the painting for me. So Devin already had this beauty, his Celica. So I'm gonna actually give that to Devin. I'm gonna just put this car away for now, because uh, we'll have to show them a size comparison. Because to scale, it's, it's pretty cool. Well, I, I'm leaving one car down, the smaller one, the right? smaller one, yeah. <laughs> so it looks a little bit bar, like it's an actual car. But if you look at the Celica, it looks more like a Camaro, uh, anyway. And any guy who knows car profiles, if you look at the roof line, actually silhouette. Camaro to Celica, honestly, I'm, I love Camaros, 67, 68 Camaro, good car, um, but they are very similar, so really we got Japanese, they say Mustang, but if you look closely, it's Camaro to Ellinger in the, in the notch back early ones, mm -hmm. it's the fastback Celicas that have the Mustang resemblance, yeah, so, um, Toyota guys, sorry, but that's how it is, so, I've made him a chassis, uh, same chassis that I used for every other car that I've actually built. Uh, the only difference are these bars are actually smaller and the, uh, the wheelie bars are smaller to kind of be more to scale uh, for the car. Um, when he talks, uh, sometimes he makes shorter wheelie bars earlier. That's what he was getting at. I requested shorter ones for the perspective of a small car. All right, so just for perspective on the wheelie bars, Here's the Celica, here's a Charger one that I'm building. As you can see, it's 
pretty sm it's about an inch and a half smaller there and even from the front three quarters of an inch shorter from from the front of the charger to okay. the and keep in mind the charger overhang let's get the car side by side the back so the car is longer and the front obviously is longer so you all you're looking at is wheelbase here yeah this is this is primarily wheelbase your wheelbase is center here is for your rear wheels and then somewhere within this slot here we will actually put where your front wheel uh, will go yeah it's a it's a little bit adjustable just so you can actually uh, adjust it to where you want your car the different stances the different uh, rake you want to have thanks again guys and girls for joining Bob and I on the toy shop on dad's toy garage YouTube channel um, I think what he's doing is pretty cool and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing my little car run down the track but uh, until next time guys we'll talk to you later